Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today in this tutorial, I'll be talking about how to make an advanced queue system for your game on Core. So, this queue system will have a GUI, it will have I mean, lots of cool things. Um, you can skip to around the end of the video if you want to see what it looks like, but let's start getting working on this. So I'm going to call this queue system tutorial. I'll make a new project, but you don't have to. We need two scripts. We need a view manager client. This will like handle joining the queue in the client and leaving the queue on the client stuff like when you press buttons and etc. Then we create a new script and call this queue manager server. So I think first we should fill in on the code and then we'll make all the UI. So let me So here we have the queue manager server. So we need to have a variable for the queues. So we'll go queues. We need to go to to store player IDs. I mean, queues and player IDs in them, that kind of stuff. Then we need a basic function that's say local function for join queue. So this is for when a player joins a queue. We're going to want the player, player's name that. It's going to join it and the ID of the queue they want to join. And let's also connect it to an event. So events.connect for player and join queue. Oops. Queue into the drive join queue function. Okay, so we have a bit of stuff in here. So local active queue goes use for ID. So this will get the queue with this matching ID. And then if not active queue. So if this queue is non-existent, then we're actually going to just make it. And set act to be more than just made. So I think it's pretty simple. So player passes in the ID of the queue to join. We select the queue from the queues table. If it's not there, then we add it to the queues table, empty table here, and we set the active queue to this. And this was from local queues. So active queues just name that the one of the functions currently actively working with. But yeah, it's going to support local queues, so there's no need to worry about that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check if the player is ready to queue. Can't check that out right now. But so it goes to all the queues, and if the player number one is a player, then we should an end. Since the queue only supports two players, then when, once the second player joins, then the player will actually to join more queues, and they're just basically it's sent to the game or whatever. So there should not be any need to worry about that. We can also add more two dot player two equals players have a first for multiple players and you can do that as well with a bit of code modification. But it should be pretty simple. And then if active q dot player one and the active q dot player one not equals two Player. So if, if the queue already has player one and it's not this player, so it's other player that's running the queue first, then we would do active queue dot player two. There's a player that wants to join the queue. And then let's call the start queue function. It hasn't been made yet, but we'll go in a minute. So that was active queue dot player. One equals player. And those can all be called the update clients function. It's to update the client UI. So you have to make with these functions as well. So let's make the start queue function. And the function start queue. And then this needs to be the active queue. 
and then we can just do no go players goes active dot player one active two dot player two. And see if you have like three, four players here, the shoes to be pretty easy to change. This part has to be changed a little bit as well, but this is a good tutorial we're focusing on having two players. But like if you if you know some new way you should be able to adapt it to multiple players or even infinite amount of players pretty easily. Use maybe not infinite but like a certain amount of like five, six, etc. Um you this name is so we delete the current queue so this queue no longer exists. Um so not control it anymore. Get the clients. And then we would do game and for players BC and game scene players. And let's just do local and game scene equals my scene. I'm just gonna like transfer to game or whatever. Um I was I'm just gonna do this. You can replace this function whenever you want to transfer the players to their game or round or whatever. You can look through the API in different ways of doing this, but I'm just going to use transfer scene. Then local function update. You just have to be above, right? Yeah. Local function update lines. The active queue. It's going to be And what we're going to do is look for data to send. I mean, this is going to be the one part where you probably actually might not be infinite players or something because the event broadcast is going to be limited. But we're going to do a little bit of stuff to optimize this. So for k, do in pairs, use do. Not, no, not updating windows. Anyways, if object dot is added to dot player one. And this is that we're checking that the player is still there. Because the player like isn't there whatever happened, maybe the player somehow died or left. Um then we're just gonna, you know, delete the queue just to be safe. It's a quick way to do it. It might actually be better to put in a different function, but we just have to do this object is valid check anyways because we don't want to have any potential errors. So I'm just going to put that there. Data to send. Name equals to player one dot name and then ID equals K. And so I'm pretty sure I've been broadcasting quarter into like one kilobyte or something. So you, you want to make sure you don't have too many cubes and you want to make sure the game is for you know that. Um, otherwise, it could cause issues with the event not sending. So, events dot broadcast your players update you. Let's just send a data to send. Um, I can actually come like that because it makes me see better. Anyways. Actually, I'm gonna. Sorry about the cut. I'm just gonna go back to your now. So I remember to up my video resolution and zoom in a little bit so you guys can see better. So in case you missed the code from the previous section, you can see it now. I'll leave it on for a second. So we also want to have a function for deleting a queue. If player wants to delete the queue or something, the local function delete your player ID. So taking a player in the ID of the queue they want to delete. And um local active queue equals use for ID. If player equals active without player one. So this will double check that it's not they did not find at least someone else's queue or something in case someone makes like a quick troll. Um then up here means so someone is trying to leave someone else's queue. 
you think this might be a bug, or, or it could actually be someone trying to break something. So it's more like a punish a player somehow, or you're trying to use hacks, but I'm not going to go into that. I mean, it could just be a bug if that happens. It's unlikely, but I'm just going to leave that there in case you want to do something with it. Here's for ID. Just new, and then just update the clients. Pretty simple. I also want to copy this and then do delete Q, delete the Q. Once again, pretty simple. And then we're also just going to want to have a quick thing for when players leave to clear any of the active queues that they may have started. In that player left, prevent, connect, function, player. I'm just going to use an inline function for this because it's easier, I guess, for K. Not sure why I put it out there. K, Q, in pairs, is zero. Um, if Q dot player one equals to player, then we do. Is okay, and there is no then of the clients. That is actually half the code done for the server side. The whole server script is now done. And that's pretty epic. Now it's time to make the client side script. This part is going to be a bit more interesting. I will say that. Um, but maybe yes, got popped down. Anyways. So, I have a few things here. So we're going to want, um, let's see, local view channel plate equals fit the custom copy view channel plate. We'll add these in a little bit. And then let's just have a pipe. UI scroll panel. Here we have its little scroll panel. We'll just get the custom property of the scroll panel. We'll add this in and maybe we'll add these custom properties in and get this script done. Um, then my UI button will create zero. Actually, I guess you don't want to need this unless you're using the um, the uh, Manticore core recommended uh, extension. I think it's like um, yeah, Core Duo API. And this using this, you don't want to have to add any types. But if you are, then I recommend doing it. It's pretty cool. Definitely check out this. It, it makes uh, scripting for Core a lot better. Script get plus one option. Create your button. Wait for answer. So we have a few functions here. So the local function enable. So when someone is in a queue or they're reading a queue, created a queue, something like that, then we don't want them to be able to join other queues, rather really join the queue or having their own queue. So it's kind of same with buttons. Therefore, and it, well, this is enable, so we any many buttons, but there's score panel that children do panel bit custom property uh, button. Then we set the object dot bits religion because it's there. Was. So uh, this is set the visibility for the join buttons off. You can see here. We can change the colors, the saver it, etc. For the sake of this, I'll just be setting visibilities off and on when they're enabled. And then for this, we say have this to first on create the queue button. I mean, the button for creating a queue, and then enabled equals. Yeah. So we have two more functions: include variables, equal text, equals. I cannot type right now. 
calculating variance. Then local labeled equals three. And I remember this, we also need a function for disable. So let's do a seven ii. You can just basically change this to i off. Off. False. But we don't want to do it on our own queue. So if panel get press a button, a button wait for object text not equal to delete. Um, this is where you're going to set the delete text to for the delete button on your own queue panel. But uh, you can have a server, so I guess I'll put it up here. Local delete. Next, there's delete. Emphasize the delete text, and that will make it better. Okay, so now we need the other things here. So let's have a local function. Leave view. We don't need the first thing for this thing. There's just a button. Just need the ID, and then just do install broadcast queue. It's basically leave, leading a queue. Um, if you created your queue, you don't want to be in it. You just want to join someone else's queue. This function will be called. Do this button. And then just enable everything again. Let's have a control queue. I'm going to disable stuff because um, there's probably still going to be a few seconds in between joining the queue and um, being sent to the game. So it's best to have the cleanup if pick any other buttons in the time that that's being done. So it's going to disable stuff again. Oh, I thought it was disable. Now comes the fun part the update UI function. This function is going to be a bit of a chunker, quite a bit of code in here. So I'm going to try to explain it all. Local function date UI. You know, this could be the queue data, but all the queues and all that. Um, so local self queue. There's no system to be our own queue. Then for keep. For key in pairs of Q, do if key dot name equals game dot bit local player dot name. This way we can just find the self Q. So Q equals P and then we do break. I hate uh, VS Code so much. I like to use a Vim, but for Quora, I have to use Windows instead of Linux. So I don't want to have him on here. It's just a bit annoying. For file in parents or so to remove all the current uh, queue UI things. Get children. Do I would destroy. So now what we need to do is we're gonna spawn all the new UI. So local i zero so this will just spawn our own queue if so if, if the player has created the queue then it'll spawn this on top then i equals one so this is going to be the iterator so we know how many panels are spawned so far um so go to key sort your panel um there's no dot set queue panel template key dot parent will scroll panel then we get custom packing for name. Wait, object text equals own text. We get custom packing. A button, wait for object dot text. I'll show me this as well. Okay, next line equals. 
things to text and text in variable redefined up here. Um, then dot lift event connect self key. So we will just have the um, idea of the self queue here. So this ID the queue, and then a leave queue will take in the ID from this and um, delete the queue. And now we spawn in all the other players' queues. So if the player doesn't have their own queue, then it won't, it won't go through this part, so we we'll spawn this. And then we have for queue in players' queue. I'm just using queues short for queue. Um, I don't know. Um, if you got name, not equal to game dot get logo player dot name, then so so we don't want to spawn another self queue. Um, let's do at type y control logo key equals road dot spawn asset to add our template. Our parent equals go panel p dot y equals i times p dot height. So, so this means you can have any height for the panel, it will still work. This is a margin in between the panels, so this will be 20. You can change this number around, whatever you want, whatever fits your design taste. Yeah, custom property name wait for object. Object is equals p dot name. We can I'm not writing the equals and there concatenate this into this queue. This will say like let's say this queue is A frames A frame, so that's the name. You can do A frames queue, so that's gonna make it a bit nicer. Um yeah. Um oh, I capitalized P there for some reason. Yeah, no lie. Um, P get custom property of button which is an object that and the bottom there as well makes it equals rule. I like double quotes more, so I'm just gonna go like that. Connect event connect doing here we got ID. So when the person clicks put in for this thing, it will join it'll call the join queue function with the queue's ID. And then I was I plus one. And then if not enabled, then so, so if, if if it's disabled, we don't want to have the things visible for a short amount of time or whatever, so it's gonna do get custom because the queue will be disabled right once you create your own panel in your own queue so everything else will be disabled so you can't join any other queues so if a new one is when it's reloaded the UI is reloaded we don't want it to be enabled again so it's gonna disabled which I can just do and that's practically the main almost all the code done. So let's just do create the button dot select event connect function and join queue. Um and we're just gonna put a random number into a big number. Random let's do one hundred to Hundred thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, million, ten million, ten million, billion, yeah. So between a hundred and a billion. Of course, it's not the best because there might be a random, like really random, like one in a few million chance that a Q ID is the same as another Q ID, but let's not worry about that. I assume there's only like 10 Qs active at a single time. And that's like one in a million chance. So I'm not going to spend an extra 10 minutes of tutorial making a uh, ID system that doesn't overlap or something like that because that's not work for a bug that's basically almost so likely to happen. It's not even worth considering. Event.connect. Date view. 
into the, the UI. Now that is all the code done. It's pretty epic, right? I mean, I think it's pretty epic. Um, we have the code done, so now we're just gonna go to the editor. So the key manager server. We can just have this here. As you can see, it's no cost properties. Yeah, get back to here. So no cost properties are after everything. We just drag it in, and then we create a new client context. And let's drag in queue manager client. We need a scroll panel. Actually, we need a container first. Container. So we need a UI container in here. Let's add in a UI panel. We have this in middle center. Middle center. Let's scale this up to something like this. Yes, nice. Let's have a big flat on here just to just like we have everything here. We're gonna hide. We're gonna make this uh, black to make UI design easier. And then button. Let's be the create Q button. So let's have this in bottom center, bottom center. Move this up a little bit and then uh, create queue, yeah, create queue. So we have to do this as create queue button. So we're just going to do create queue button. And then now we need the scroll panel, so let's do scroll panel into the UI panel, and we can just do say middle center, middle center, it's like this perhaps, I think it looks nice, looks fine I guess. Uh, I'm just put it here, and you to scroll panel, that's, yeah. Then we also need to get a UI panel. Let's drag this into the scroll panel. Drop a background on it. How am I doing here? Parent width and let's give it a leave a default height. We can play around with this however you want. Let's be the panel for everything and then let's do next box. There we go. Uh, the middle left and middle left. And make this black text. Uh, let's stretch this out to here. Um, you can play on the right settings, make it look better. Let's just do the names. User name. Here. Let's actually drag it in the bit so it doesn't get pretty. Okay, I think that's fine then. We just need to in the button. To the panel as well. It should be like the uh, middle right and middle right. And actually, set the x offset back to zero. Make this black. We allocate yellow right with the row. There's a cement color that stands out better. And then uh, join. Uh, I think this is some beautiful UI. Like, this is the best UI course I've ever had. It's like um really, really good UI, but it th doesn't matter. So uh, this will be easy to change. Raise the button, and then you can have, uh, I think, name, right? Name, yeah. Then create a from this to panel template. And then we just go to here, drag and drop this in. So we need, we can test this out. What you also need to do, so I'm pretty good with this another script, but we can just like, I'll have this UI dot set first visible. 
So what you could probably want to do is I have like kind of trigger overlap, set this to true, something like that. But let's just test this out locally. Create queue, delete. Let's just fix any quick errors that come up. Yeah, I knew there'd be a few. Um, 45 active queue. So if we, uh, let's see, so it does delete queue here. Leave queue for ID, so queue. That seems about correct. So I'm assuming um, if you just do a print ID here, in debug it a bit quicker. Oh, because it's sending in the, <laughs> oops. I wasn't thinking about that. So when you send it, so it's off ID. Anyways. Um, Create Q, delete Q, pretty epic, yeah. Now if we do two players. Um, as you can see this one, let's create a Q. And see this shows bot two's Q, this is your Q. You can create a Q here, we have the other person's Q. Uh, let's leave this Q and then we can move this Q. And see it tries to transfer your country in offline mode, but yeah. Thanks for watching. That's a pretty basic queue system in I don't know how many minutes it's been. Um, I should keep a care of that. But anyways, if this video helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It helps out quite a bit. Anyways, um, please have a great day. I hope this story helped you. If you have any questions or complaints or any suggestions for tutorials, please leave them in the comments. Um, and have a great day.